Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the marketplace. Coming up, decisive and prudent reaction of industry watchers to Ghana Civil Aviation Authority's move to ban a faulty Delta airline aircraft, which was frequently deployed on the Accra route despite technical problems. Also coming up, revamping Ghana's railway sector, government signs a $3.2 billion agreement with South African firm Thelo DB to upgrade infrastructure on the Western Railway line to ease transport of mineral resources. This project comes at a time of heightened global economic trade tensions, leading to growing demand for African minerals and agricultural commodities. And in search of money, Cocoa Board announces closure of light crop season as it embarks on a road show in Europe to raise about $1.3 billion for the 2022-2023 cocoa crop season. Some dollar cash we need during this time of the city's decline. My name is Daryl Carl. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. And we begin this afternoon from the aviation sector. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, GCAA, has cautioned Delta Airlines against using its aircraft with registration number N195DN for flights to Accra. The caution to the airline follows uh, events of August 1, 2022, in which the aircraft uh, was forced to return to gate due to a technical problem. Now, the GCAA said following the incident, it conducted an investigation to ascertain the circumstances that led to such an occurrence. The investigation concluded that, we'll show you on your screen, the crew reported a fuel imbalance with the left main tank. The inbound crew uh, experienced the same issue on the flight leg to Accra, that is on the 31st of July, 2022. This was the same aircraft that had to return to GFK on the 25th of July, 2022, a few hours after takeoff from JFK, and which was widely reported on uh, various media outlets. Now, GCAA knows that with the negative reportage about the flight, they expected that Delta Airlines would have thoroughly investigated the issue to arrive at the root cause of the failure before dispatching the aircraft on flights. Rather, the aircraft was flown within the United States a number of times and then dispatched again to Accra only for the problem to reoccur. The authority found that unacceptable, hence the temporary denial of Delta aircraft with the registration number N195DN entry into Ghana. Well, let's make sense of the latest uh, developments. Joining us on Zoom, aviation expert Sean Mendes. Good afternoon to you, Sean. Your reaction to this move by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority? Thanks, Daryl. Uh, well, I think GCA is doing exactly what their job is. They are the safety regulator in Ghana, and it's their job to ensure that all aircraft operating in Ghana are properly uh, certified and are safe. Uh, this particular Delta Airlines aircraft, N195 Delta November, has in the last month or so had at least three and possibly as many as five major incidents which have resulted in the aircraft being grounded or diverted. Some of those have been on flights to Accra, some have been on flights to Prague and Lisbon. So this is not something that's isolated just to problems happening on the Ghana route. There was something wrong with that aircraft for sure. Uh, I don't doubt that Delta is trying to get to the bottom of what the issue is, but uh, GCA had requested Delta after the incident on 1st of August to provide them with the root cause analysis of what was causing these problems, as well as details of the remedial action. 
My understanding is that Delta has delayed in providing that response to Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. And until Ghana Civil Aviation Authority is satisfied that this, the appropriate action has been taken by Delta, they are perfectly within their rights. And in fact, they're exercising their responsibilities by ensuring that aircraft does not continue to operate to Ghana in the interim. Uh, you point out that Delta, no doubt, would try to get to the bottom of this, but does the airline have any excuse, any way to explain this, or it was just being negligent or careless? Uh, Delta has a fleet of over 100 767s, and they've got over 40 years of ex operating this type. So no airline knows the 767 better than Delta does. Uh, they are definitely not uh, negligent in by in, in any way, shape or form. They have a perfect safety record with the 767, but it is a machine and machines break. And sometimes to fix them, you don't always, are, are not always able to see what exactly went wrong. You know what the problem was, you don't know what the symptom of that was. And uh, in this particular case with the fuel imbalance, it's very hard to troubleshoot this unless the aircraft is dispatched with a full fuel tank on, on, on long flights. So I can understand why it's taken Delta a while to do this. Uh, that, of course, is no excuse. Uh, I don't believe there was ever an active safety issue with regards to, uh, to, to the way the events unfolded on the flights, uh, yeah. despite some media reports. However, you know, that is no excuse, once again, to not rectifying the fault. And I'm very sure that Delta is taking the steps if they haven't already. They have just delayed in communicating this properly to Ghana Civil Aviation Authority, which has led GCA to take the steps they have. Uh, and you indicate that, that this particular airline aircraft has plied other routes aside from um, Accra. But there is a perception that some international airlines lower standards when it comes to service delivery in Africa. Does this feed into that perception? I think the perception may be there, but the reality is that, you know, while the planes being used to Accra right now, are older ones. Uh, th these are not unsafe or less comfortable than any of the other aircraft in Delta's fleet. Uh, a 25-year-old plane that is maintained well is far safer than a two-year-old plane that is not maintained well. Uh, the reason Delta operates the 767s to Ghana is that, quite simply, they have a very large number of them, over 100. And uh, this plane is the right size with the right range to be able to, to make the flight between JFK and Accra safely and, you know, profitably. So uh, I don't think it has anything to do with that. This plane in the last one, this particular plane, which has been banned from Ghana in the last one week, has operated to Dakar, to Prague, to Edinburgh, and to Lisbon. So, you know, this is definitely not something that they're, they're, they're just sending it to Ghana because it is substandard. It operates throughout Delta's network domestically, as well as to Europe and to Asia. And uh, it's just unfortunate that, uh, you know, it's had multiple problems and two of those highly publicized ones were on the Ghana route in the last one month. And well, how significant is this move though by the GCAA? Uh, would it make other airlines uh, start to rethink the approach uh, when it comes to, you know, ensuring that, uh, that there is safety, uh, ensuring that their aircraft are also uh, on point, top notch? I think every single airline that operates to Ghana or indeed operates anywhere in the world has safety as their top priority. So I think what GC, as I said, this is not really a safety issue as much as it's a case of Delta not complying with the requirements and the request of GCA to give them the details of what went wrong and what they've done to fix it. GCA needs to be satisfied that Delta has taken the steps. Delta has, has delayed on that for reasons best known to them. And uh, I'm sure that once they're able to, to provide GCA with this is what went wrong, this is what we did to fix it, GCA will be satisfied. But I don't think there are any safety questions about Delta or indeed any other airline flying to Ghana. And a part of that is the credit to GCA and the good job that they do monitoring the Ghana aviation sector. Great. And so uh, how do you anticipate this plays out uh, and when eventually will we see this uh, temporary ban lifted? Well, Delta, as I said, has over 100 aircraft of this type. So while one aircraft is banned from Ghana, the rest of the fleet is perfectly, uh, you know, is continuing to serve the route between JFK mm -hmm. and Accra. And uh, that will continue for now. I think, you know, as, as was noted in, in the letter, that uh, once Delta is able to put the paperwork together and explain to GCA, look, this was the sensor that was faulty, or this was the pump that was faulty, or whatever the root cause of the problems were, and this is what we've done to replace it. You can see the data, it's now flown, you know, 14 days without any issues on long haul flights. 
that GCA will indeed lift that suspension. And as I said, that's exactly the way things are supposed to go. Uh, you know, aircraft will have problems. They should be grounded until those problems are fixed. And GCA and Delta are acting responsibly to ensure that it is done for the safety of the traveling public. All right. Sean Mendes, great to talk to you this afternoon. I appreciate your time. Aviation expert there, Sean Mendes, speaking to us uh, on the story we have been reporting about a Delta Airlines aircraft being temporarily banned uh, by the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, like he points out, uh, hopefully things will be resolved. Plus, Delta has uh, a number of fleets. So, you know, uh, if you're having to, if your Delta airline is your favorite uh, airline, uh, you don't have a problem. There's always uh, a, an air aircraft to replace that one that has been grounded. Well, let's move on to other stories for you. Government has signed a $3.2 billion agreement with South African firm TeloDB to upgrade infrastructure on the Western Railway Line to ease transport of mineral resources. This will be one of the biggest investments in the country's railway master plan, which is in its first phase of implementation. Speaking at a short ceremony to sign the agreement, Minister of Railways Development John Peter Melu assured the project will help reduce the cost of transporting goods along the corridor as well as reduce traffic pressures on the road. Here's more. The neglect of the Western Railway line has left many roads in the region deteriorated due to the frequent haulage of natural resources from the region to other parts of the country and the ports. Under the agreement, Ghana Railway Company will act as rail operator and Thelo DB Consortium will play the role of rail manager with the Afriexim Bank as financier. Minister of Railways Development John Peter Mewe explains the reason behind the deal. Agreement. It's the combination of the entire line. The rationale for this is that Money to manage the cash flows to pay back for the invested amount of money. And that's where Talo DB is coming in for the management. So the management, it's going to be the whole line. It's going to be an integrated management of the railway sector within the Western Corridor. So they're going to manage the Western Corridor in collaboration with Ghana Railway Company, who are the asset owners. So this is who are coming in as the rail manager, while we have the rail operator as the Ghana Railway Company Limited. Chairman of Thelo DB, Ronnie Intilu, believes the project will be a key infrastructure for the implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. As you will be aware, this project comes at a time of heightened global economic trade tensions, leading to growing demand for African minerals and agricultural commodities. Along with the ambition for implementation of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement, the continent's demographics and the glaring need for industrialization highlight the urgent need for infrastructure development, the need for effective transportation systems, and considering our, land, land, our large landmass railways. President of the Afrix and Bank, Professor Benedict Orama, applauded the government for taking such a bold initiative despite the harsh economic environment. Given the challenges that the Kenyan and many African economies are contending with, a weak politician will have delayed this project just on the basis of political calculation, even when it adds no new debt to Ghana. President Akufado is, of course, no ordinary politician. And that is why we are here today. And I say congratulations. We also thank you for helping to strengthen the bank, making it possible for us to, for you to support projects of this nature. In other news, Ghana Cocoa Board has announced the closure of a light cocoa crop season. A statement from Cocoa Board, Copy to Joy Business, said the closure will take effect from the 8th of September this year. Now, this will bring in some dollar cash during this time of the city's decline. There is more in the following report. The announcement kickstarts the preparation for the main crop season. The main crop season, which starts from October to May, is the period within which the regulator buys most of the cocoa beans from farmers for exports. The light crop season, which concludes the crop season, is used to mainly to supply cocoa beans to local processors. The statement added that in order to assist licensed buying companies to obtain the final returns from the hinterlands, Cocoa Board has decided that returns on the declared purchases will be accepted up to 4 p.m. on Thursday, 15 September. Meanwhile, a team from Cocoa Board, Bank of Ghana, and the Ministry of Finance are currently on a roadshow in the UK as part of preparations to raise about $1.3 billion for the next crop season. The funds which will be used to purchase cocoa beans for the 2022-2023 crop season 
is also expected to boost dollar supply to the economy to reduce the exchange rate pressures on the city. We really need that cash, don't we? Well, Ghana's non-traditional exports for 2021 amounted to $3.3 billion, reflecting an increase of about 17% over the 2020 earnings of uh, over $2.8 billion. Now, there's more from the Ashanti Regional Branch Manager of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Isaac Tezia Akwe, in this report. The Ashanti Regional Branch Manager of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Isaac D.A.C. Akwe, made this known at a sensitization program organized by the Ghana Shippers Authority and the Bank of Ghana for Exporters in the Northern Region. The sensitization program was to increase the awareness on the letter of commitment LOC requirements. It was also to educate them on the procedures involved, promote compliance as well as identify challenges associated with the implementation of the LOC. He said non-traditional export contributed about 17% to the national merchandise export for 2021. The channel of Ghana's non-traditional exports, such as the cultural programs, emanates from Ghana's middle to the northern parts of the country. And the northern region particularly is noted for handicrafts and mainly for share butter and share butter related products. It is important to mention that Ghana's non traditional earnings for the year 2021 amounted to about 3.3 billion United States dollars and it represents an increase of about 17% of the of 2020. Mr. DAC Akwe said the Ghana Shippers Authority received several complaints from exporters and some custom house agents on challenges of the LOC reason for the workshop. Engagement with exporters on various platforms brought to the fore concerns such as inadequate time allocated for the repatriation of export proceeds, blocking of subsequent export transactions for non-repatriation of proceeds beyond 60 days, delays in assessing repatriated proceeds from commercial banks, low exchange rates offered by the banks compared shipping service providers. The Ghana Shippers Authority, flowing from that, intervened by creating platforms in various regions for Bank of Ghana officials to provide information and to sensitize exporters on LLC. Speaking on the sidelines of the program, Deputy Director of the Bank of Ghana, Eric Kweku Hammond, called on exporters to, to comply with the LOC requirement to avoid facing the law. This bit of the program is meant to further sensitize the exporters to make sure that they come to terms with how the system works and how it is to be used and then also get the opportunity to hear at first time all the challenges and the difficulties that they are facing and then also to be able to prefer a solution to the numerous challenges confronting them. Let's bring you some more stories here on the marketplace. Senior partner at auditing and accounting firm KPMG, Anthony Sapon, has charged the business community not to hold back help to small and medium scale enterprises to enable them grow. According to him, the ongoing economic challenges must be seen as an opportunity for new discoveries. Anthony Sapon spoke to Joy Business during an event to Anna alumni of KPMG Ghana. Here's more in this report. KPMG believes challenges in the Ghanaian economy are temporary and present an opportunity for entrepreneurs to innovate and make changes in the way they operate. According to senior partner Anthony Sapong, the alumni of KPMG has been part of the growth of businesses in the country, hence the need to use the event to celebrate and honor them. 
We must continue to support our communities and wherever we find ourselves. Of course, today Ghana is facing economic and financial challenges. But in every challenge, there's always an opportunity. And this is where we have trained the minds to make sure that even in the face of challenges, they are bringing out the opportunities that will protect the welfare and well-being of people, the organizations, and the nation as large. And therefore, today's event is to urge our colleagues that wherever they are, they should not look at the challenges of today, but they should look at what short-term, medium and long-term solutions that they can provide to their organizations, to their businesses and their nation for us to overcome this challenge in no time. President of the Alumni and Managing Director of Bank of Africa, Kobe Anda, told Joy Business that former employees of the company have contributed to economic growth of the country. In KPMG, the values were taught were hard work, profit. you have to be a professional, key, you have to have integrity. So if I look back and I look at all the alumni, I think all of them carry those values into wherever they are today. I've not heard, heard any scandal of a former KPMG person we, those values when it's still with us and we leave them. The firm also declared its support for government's effort to revive the economy amid rising inflation and the depreciating city. Now, as part of measures to support startups take advantage of the African continental free trade area, the United Nations Development Program has set up the Timbuktu Initiative, a bold public-private partnership aimed to invest $1 billion uh, and commercial capital in the next 10 years. Speaking to Joy Business, Chief Innovation Officer for Regional Bureau of Africa, Dr. Eleni Martin, said this is to build a distributed innovation network to cushion small businesses. The ambitious vision set by Timbuktu is to galvanize Africa's tech and tech-enabled startups. According to Dr. Madin, the aim is to nurture startups to form partnerships for global investment. The world is starting to recognize the African talent. Uh, we see venture capital uh, funding coming into Africa, growing double on double. In fact, last year, 2021, it quadrupled over 2020 levels. So what we're trying to do at UNDP is sort of look at what can we do to improve on this really good trend? What can we do to, to leverage it and to diffuse the benefits to the entire continent? So with Timbuktu, what we're aiming to do is solve really three problems. The first is how to increase risk capital, capital that can finance innovation, which is by, its, by nature uh, risky. The second is what we're trying to do is bring in all the players in the ecosystem, universities, research centers, um, talent pools, the incubators and accelerators, as well as the finance side. Country director for the United Nations Development Program, Angela Lusigi, said the initiative will help startups attract investors. I think this is an excellent opportunity for young Ghanaians who have innovative ideas using technology to be able to access not just funding but also knowledge and expertise on how to grow their businesses to scale. Because we know there are some opportunities right now um, and this is the reason why Ghana is one of the countries that is being looked at is because there is already a thriving um, ecosystem support for small businesses. Through this initiative, we are looking at growing these small businesses to scale. So we're looking at innovative ideas that can really transform uh, the opportunities for young Ghanaians, not just in Ghana, but across Africa. Timbuktu is a new approach for UNDP in line with a vision for a future smart Africa that transcends old development paradigms. Now, young entrepreneurs have been entreated to use homegrown solutions and indigenous means that relate to the country's challenges in solving problems. According to Executive Director of Springboard Roadshow Foundation, Comfort Okran, entrepreneurs should acquire basic skills to find the most beneficial ways of doing things with the tools and techniques appropriately designed and created by them for a purpose. She spoke to Joy Business at a thank you tour for Adjoa Agogoshi, a young Ghanaian entrepreneur. Comfort Okran believes that the narrative of Ajua Agbubuloshi should serve as an example for many young business people to stay focused on what they are doing. She clarified that Springboard would keep assisting young people in Ghana who are determined to change the current economic situation. 
At Springboard, we're looking that in the next couple of years, we'll focus on agribusinesses as well as uh, people who are working in the TVET sector. We also hope that it will be a, it's a deliberate thing that we will do to ensure that rural communities, people who may be in the informal sector, as well as those who may be differently abled, that they are given the opportunity to also realize their dreams. So that is the next step forward for Springboard. Speaking to Joy Business, Ajua Agbubuloshi, a former KNUST graphic designing student who ventured into the delivery services to provide solutions to corporate women who may find it difficult to go to the market to purchase their food staff, express her eagerness to grow the company. As if someone has shopped from Big Sam's before, if someone follows Big Sam's, on our social media pages, you know that we love what we do. It's beyond getting the profit. It's all about making people smile and giving people convenience right at their doorstep. So on behalf of my team, I would like to say a very big thank you to UMB. 10 years, I mean, five more years will be 10 years old and you will look back and be so proud that you did this. You won't regret it. Executive Director of UMB Bank Ghana, Nana Jumo Bene, said this is within the bank's mission, hence it is necessary to support it. When this year started, um, which is our 50th anniversary year, we are very clear that we really wanted to uh, celebrate this with our clients um, and people who we would like to bank. And at UMB, one of our stated objectives is to become known as an SME-focused bank. After 50 years of uh, building a strong heritage in corporate banking, um, we wanted to extend our reach into our SME uh, segment in the country, recognizing that it is the potential uh, engine for growth. As part of the Thank You Tour, MTN Ghana and Enterprise Life Insurance, who had supported her and treated her to stay focused. Next on the marketplace, your money tip on Money Lab. Hi there. Thank you for joining me once again on Money Lab. In our last episode, we looked at what an investor earns by investing in a fixed income investment. Today, we'll be addressing the question how long can I invest my money? in a fixed income investment. You can invest your money in a fixed income security in Ghana within a period of time from one week up until 20 years. Now, treasury bills in Ghana have tenors 91 day, 182 day, and 364 days. And with bonds and notes, we have tenors ranging from two years, three years, five years, six years, seven, 10, 15, and 20. There you have it. You have an array of tenders to invest. Thank you once again for joining us on today's episode of Money Lab. More news is always on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Thanks for watching, everyone. We are back same time tomorrow. Goodbye.